Johan, Caesar, the floor is yours. Very good afternoon to all of you. I'm very pleased to be here and very uh, pleased actually to see all of you. A lot of uh, familiar faces, which I've seen over the last 20 years, giving talks one way and another. And I have to say, uh, we're getting to the point where I think someone else has to take over this, this, this particular responsibility. Anyway, we're here uh, to talk about the developments of IOTA, not the, the purpose of IOTA, but the developments of IOTA in the last year. It's been an exciting year. We have done a lot. We have made, we've, we've had, uh, made a lot of progress, and I think we will try and get this across to you. Now, there will be three of us talking. I will speak to a minimum of uh, possibly no more than about five minutes or so. Um, Johan here, PA3EXX, will then uh, talk about the IT, new IT system, where we have got to, and we, we have actually got it working uh, on the existing da database at the moment. And then Caesar will talk uh, uh, about uh, the validation system and the developments we have made there, and possibly one or two future developments as well. So that is what we're going to do. Okay, number one. Now, uh, perhaps not totally serious on my face, but I have to say it's quite difficult actually to get a name. Now, we, the, the society agreed last year at this time that we should set up a company and that it would deal with IOTA ex uh, in its entirety. So, we were faced with having to, uh, to, to get a name for it. Now, initially, we, we took Island Radio Awards Limited, IRAL, because we did not want to use our preferred one because we were going to go for a charity. And if you go, if we had got it, then fine, we could switch to that one. And But the, the difficulty would be if we'd already used it for our initial one, there could have been problems in, in that respect. So we went for Island Radio Awards Limited, uh, Company Limited, my guarantee. But we apl applied at the same time for a charity, Islands on the Air IOTA Foundation. Come on, they didn't accept it as a charity. Uh, you wouldn't believe that, that, that we, we, we missed out on that. We, we, we did not convince them of the charitable nature of what we were doing. So we then had to face with the situation that we, were, we went back to company limited by guarantee. Um, and so we took Islands on the Air IOTA Limited. We couldn't go for foundation at that stage. We didn't have the funds for a foundation. So we had to go for Limited. In course, and you will hear a little bit about this this afternoon, we hope actually to get our end result of Islands on the Air IOTA Foundation. Now just to explain how we got. Now we've got directors at the present moment. We have uh, four directors, Stan, uh, who is involved mainly with the government's governance issue and done sterling work in dealing with the RSGB, um, and uh, we are very grateful to him. We wouldn't be where we are now without the help which he has given us. We have Caesar, who is passionate about uh, IOTA, as you, well, you've already heard, and you will be hearing more uh, from him. And we have Johan, who does the IT and has done superb work on the, the IT. Now, the order will be first uh, uh, Johan and then, then Caesar will come in afterwards. Next. What changed? Okay. Right. What changed? Responsibility for all aspects of IOTA moved to the company. The management, finance, strategy, IT promotion. Um, every aspect of it is now uh, a part of the responsibility of the company, and we take that very seriously. And as directors, we are under the, um, the, the legislation which applies to all companies in the UK. You might say, why change? And the answer to that is, IOTA appeals
You might, as I say, ask why did we change? The answer is IOTA appeals mainly to people outside the UK. About 90% of the people involved in the program are indeed outside the UK. That is not for want of persuading more people in the UK to join the IOTA program, and I do hope that if you're not in the program already, you will consider it. We have a hiccup, I think. I will continue anyway. We Relationship with the RSGB. We are partners working to a memorandum of understanding. It's lucky actually you don't have this slide because uh, uh, the next line says signed today. Um, it wasn't um, with luck tomorrow. But uh, as I say, that's, that was fortuitous that that slide does not come up. And a commercial agreement which will follow very shortly. This involves joint cooperation with the society. We're grateful to the society for all they have done. And we look forward to this partnership being a very fruitful and successful one. Now, the main job of the program, obviously, is to continue to promote. You've got it now. OK. OK, can we move on to the next one? Yes, and to the next one. Yes. OK, fine. We have been running the program now for 30 years um, since we took it over from Jeff Watts, 30, 32 years now. And uh, that has had to continue during this period when we are doing some structural changes. And the main structural change, of course, now rewriting the software which underpins the program. It's because the technolog technological developments uh, allow us now to, uh, to push it further uh, and uh, uh, indeed start have a, a, a bespoke system for the, uh, for the future of the program. Majoring on confirmation of contacts by matching with logs on club log. Why club log and not LOTW? It's a question of just weight, and we, we have to uh, uh, approach this step by step. The easier option was do it doing it via club log, and Michael Wells has been very helpful uh, in uh, uh, providing the interface and helping us with our, our many requests of him and we regard him as a strategic partner. The IT project, which Johan is the uh, manager for, um, is due to be launched in May next year. If we can do it a little bit earlier, we will indeed try for that. But some paperless QSLing has been added to the existing system, and lots of folk are actually using it already. Now, next one. a week ago, when I was doing this, the figure was 13%. As of today, it is over 15%. Um, and it's going higher, and it will go higher uh, very quickly, I'm sure. We obviously don't know what the figure eventually will be, but what that means is that of all credits this year that we have issued, 15% have not been accompanied by cars, but have been, uh, provide, have been matched with QSOs on the database. Surprisingly, uh, it's not just uh, the, uh, the new developments of uh, one DXCC country equals one IOTA, which has added a lot of credits. But IOTA contest ones, which were previously not added in, feature quite prominently as well in that increase from 5% to 15%. And we are still eight months away from launching the main system. That system, as I say, is due to come on, on launch next May. Uh, we are 
We have asked for testers, and we've got a number, of, we have a testing team. If any of you are interested in joining that testing team, then perhaps have a word with us afterwards. We really want as many as possible who are prepared to help us in that way. Now, a, a very recent development was that we decided that uh, we should launch an appeal by the Friends of IOTA. This is a supporters group within IOTA on the Air Limited. And it was launched in late June this year uh, to give enthusiasts the, the, the opportunity to support the program with donations and particularly to ensure its long-term future because the sustainability of the program rests on the help and assistance we get from you, the customers, and we do encourage those of you who have not so far uh, considered supporting us to do so. There is a button on the website, the IOTA website, which says donate. Can't be easier than that. Our initial target is £25,000 to pay for the IT development, and we're still short of that target. So please help. If you are yet to start in IOTA, we've worked out that paperless QSLing will help reduce your costs by a ratio of 30 to 1. Sending a direct card can cost you anything and getting it back can cost you anything up to four or five pounds. Uh, if you do it by uh, online confirmation with a matched uh, log, uh, it is a fraction of that. You actually have to pay the IOTA uh, company just 9p for getting the, the credit. So it's a ratio of 30 to 1. It might even be higher than that. So at the moment, that is where we stand. We have made a lot of progress. We are going to make more progress. And I, the, the, the essence of that and the, the core of that is how we're going to develop the program IT-wise. And I would now like to pass uh, over to Johan, who will uh, tell you a little bit about the, uh, the system which will come on stream uh, in, in spring next year. Okay, thank you, Roger. Uh, I'll open up my presentation. No, it's okay, it's just a couple of slides. Okay, uh, I'm in going to uh, take you through the operational part of the QSO matching. Like Roger uh, indicated, uh, Michael Wells from Clock Clublock has been very helpful and has provided us uh, with an interface for the QSO mat matching. Uh, well, first I'm going to talk about what a QSO match is. A QSO match is... Uh, a record in a database based on two QSOs and the two QSOs have to be quite similar. Uh, the call signs have to match, uh, the time has to match within 50 minutes in clip, club log, the modes have to match and the band have to match, has to match. Uh, for these QSOs, club log uh, generates a record that is a Q called a QSO match. And it basically has the same meaning as a QSL card. It uh, confirms a two-way contact between two uh, stations. But uh, it doesn't require a postage or a printed uh, card and all the hassle that comes with that and all the costs. So it's an electronic thing and it can be uh, exchanged between two computer systems. And we have linked our IOTA system to the Clublog database. And uh, by doing this, we can obtain uh, QSO matches from Clublog, and our uh, IOTA users don't have to uh, send uh, QSL cards to checkpoints anymore, but they can use this mechanism. Now, there are two kinds of QSO matches that we uh, use. The first one is the DXCC matches one IOTA. 
there are 102 uh, DXCC entities that qualify for a specific IELTA group. So if we know the DXCC entity, uh, we also know the IELTA group and we don't need any more information. Uh, for example, uh, Cure Island is one of these. So a lot of people who uh, have worked a lot of DXCC entities will probably quali qualify for the IOTA 100 award. Um, another uh, base of uh, QSO matches is the accepted activations list. Uh, we accept QSO matches for activations that have been validated by our validation team, which is run by CSR. Uh, and these activations are listed on our website. I will show that in a short while. So uh, when you upload your clock, your log to club log, uh, you will get QSO matches for DXCC uh, that qualifies for islands and also for uh, individual IOTA groups. Uh, this is the technical process of the of the QSO matches. I'm going to go through that uh, very fast. Uh, the IOTA system uh, won't uh, store your credentials for club lock. These are private and we don't do anything with it. So what you have to do is you have to log in to the IOTA website. If you don't have an account, you have to re register. And then from the IOTA website, you can connect to Clublog with your own credentials. Clublog then sends us a list of IOTA matches that we present to you. And you can take those IOTA matches and uh, add them to your application. So that is the basic mechanism. The Clublog system uh, talks to the IOTA system through an interface, but the two systems are independent. Yes, yes. Yeah. And what I'm going to show is just uh, the current system. The new system will be launched uh, next year, but it also has the interface for the IOTA contest logs. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> this is our current website. It has been uh, built by Dominique and uh, maintained by Martin and Dominique for many years. And we have added uh, the QSO matching to the current website. Uh, initially, it was the plan uh, just to do it on a low profile and to see uh, how, uh, how it will, would work out. But, uh, well, so many people are using it now, so it has uh, been grown into a considerable amount of, uh, of the traffic on the website. Uh, when you log on to the website, you can go to the My Credits option. Sorry. Okay. I have no signal now, so can someone of the technical crew assist? Or? Okay, uh, this is the IOTA website, which has been uh, built by Dominic and uh, Martin for, uh, and maintained by them for many years. And we have integrated uh, the QSO matching 
to the current software to uh, see how it would work out and to see uh, what the obstacles were. Um, when you want to claim credits for your IOTA application, you go to the My Credits option. Um, and first of all, uh, there is a link uh, which has an excellent help, uh, an instruction file, which was composed uh, by Charles. Yes, M0 OXO. And this guide will take you through the whole process step by step. But I'm also going to do that now. Um, there is some more information on this. Uh, when we first started with the project, a lot of people were uploading uh, their uh, logs to the IOTA website. Uh, and it is, uh, that, that is not uh, what should be done. You should, uh, the logs should be uploaded to the club log website because the, uh, the QSO matches are done in the club log system and not in the IOTA system. Uh, another part of information is uh, the last update on the accepted activations list. Uh, CESAR is uh, updating uh, the list uh, almost every week and once it has been processed you will be notified uh, on this uh, screen and you can check for new QSO matches. And a little bit uh, down here uh, are the number of QSOs that have been submitted uh, through uh, Clublock QSO matches uh, and this number of QSOs is from the 1st of July, uh, so it's quite good. And uh, also uh, should be mentioned that uh, we only have about 1,600 operations on the activations list. And, uh, well, it should be many times more. So that number is uh, expected to grow significant over the next couple of months. Okay, so when you want to add uh, QSO matches to your application, you go over here. There is also the Friends of IOTA link to PayPal. Uh, on the top is the list of accepted activations. And this lists all activations that we accept for QSO matching that have a log on club log. And it also lists uh, all uh, uh, DXCC entities that qualify for, a s for an IOTA. Uh, for example, uh, Echo Alpha 8, that is uh, Africa 4, Canary Islands. If you have a, Q a QSO match for an Echo Alpha 4, then we know that, it's, that it, uh, it, it qualifies for Africa 4. Uh, but there are other groups uh, which consist of... Uh, uh, there are other DXCC entities which have uh, several IOTA groups. Uh, for example, uh, uh, Delta 4, it has Africa 5, and by heart I think it also has Africa 86 or something like that. Yeah. And you can see that uh, these activations are listed individually. Another thing is that we also list the time of the first and the last QSO for each activation because uh, sometimes uh, people go to different uh, uh, IOTA groups using the same call sign or, and that can be in a period of weeks, months, days or even years. So. It's a long list and it's getting longer. Okay, I'm going to hide uh, the list. So, if I want to check uh, if there are any new uh, qualifying matches on Clublog, I have to connect uh, to Clublog with my Clublog credentials, not my IOTA credentials. I'm going to do that now.
Okay. Uh, this shows that I have one new QSO match, uh, which is with uh, Asia 202. Uh, I can check it and add it to my application. And now it's in my application. It's uh, the second row, and uh, it says that the source is club log. So it's very easy, and uh, especially for people who are uploading uh, logs uh, fr from many, many years and who don't have any uh, IOTA credits, it can filter out uh, all IOTA groups, uh, over 1100, I think, and you can submit without uh, sen sending any QSL, any QSL cards to your uh, checkpoint. Um, so that is where we are now. Th we have the whole process working for QSO matching. Uh, the validation team is working very hard to, to add new uh, activations. And every time you log in, you can, check, uh, f you can check for new activations. Another thing we are looking into is that uh, a lot of uh, old activators uh, have used uh, different uh, log names on club log. For example, uh, Yankee Bravo 4 India Romeo has done uh, many activations, but when he uploaded his log, he, uh, he didn't use his call sign, but for example, Yankee Bravo 4 India Romeo underscore Oceania 197 or whatever. So at the moment, the only thing uh, that will uh, produce a match is if you upload uh, uh, your log with that call sign. But uh, we have talked to, uh, about this to Michael, and uh, there probably will be an extension in Club Log where the proper call sign is stored with the log name. S because we know there are many, many logs, and also from a lot of Russian activities, where uh, the call sign is not uh, the log name. So we are working on that. Um, well, that was about uh, this for, for the working of the. Uh, the QSO matching mechanism. I'm going to pr present the microphone to Caesar, who will talk about the validation. Yeah, and I'm going to switch to his presentation. Okay, here we go. The guys give this Mar Martian. Uh, well anyway, um, <laughs> there are a couple of things uh, I'll point out once we have um, this. Uh, Next screen on Charles. On uh, yeah. So there's a validation team now. Um, uh, Bob uh, K3EST is is very active. We have a process which is uh, based on some um, template, uh, which we through which we would like to gather some information from uh, activators. The uh, at the present time, starting January 1st, 2016, until the end of the year, we decided to run uh, this checklist, uh, which requests the number of info, you know, data for the purposes of uh, approving, uh, accepting that, not approving, accepting um, that operation to all the uh, uh, um, uh, activations done through it uh, done to uh, IOTA references in on the most wanted list up to 50 percent which means that um, up to those who request who are uh, needed by more than 50 percent of the uh, membership um, the results show that so far for the first nine months we had 229 230 operations which provided this um, information back to us that were accepted. Uh, one of them was not accepted for technical reasons, and so which is a very good, <laughs> I think it's a very good ratio. And about, um, I would say, 75 of them have logs uh, to club log. There's a waiting period of two months, which uh, we allowed for Operation uh, between the operate the moment the operation is finished and the, mo the, the moment the uh, the club log that they might have uploaded will be made available for uh, QSO matching. This has to do with um, um, I guess stopping or, or limiting discontent. Um, 
just in case an operation would be found, uh, you know, unacceptable due to whatever technical reasons, um, didn't happen so far. We, we're doing very well, but you know, just in case, we don't want people to um, be in a position of uh, not knowing, sending for cards, sending for cues, accepting this and that. So. Uh, anyway, uh, the, 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 57 and nine, the 56 and 19 means that 19 um, uh, operations might have taken place in the month of September, for instance, or late, um, um, late um, um, August, and the, 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 the still in the two months. But these 75 operations, which are about 30 percent of, uh, of the total number, uh, are only those that have been identified to have uh, let's say usual clo um, uh, log names, which means the call sign equals the name of the log at club log. There are a few others, a few more than these who have um, logs at club log, but we cannot currently use due to the fact that they are unusual names, such as, for example, uh, six Mike, six Mike from Asia 26. Their log name is six Mike, six Mike slash 2016. How in the world could anybody know that? Um, it's beyond my um, knowledge. But I guess if you worked it and if you're interested, sure. But we need a mechanism to find this out in a, in a much more automated way. So we're working on that, but we're not there. <coughs> now, um, we are tracking all sorts of other operations. And the reason I'm, I'm mentioning this to you is just to have an idea of the work going behind the scenes. So these are expeditions um, from which we are waiting for documents. Uh, these are expeditions. Um, we are still waiting for documents, but these are kind of overdue, so we hope to, we'll have to make a decision on those pretty soon. These are expeditions we have planned, so we've, we are all constantly checking, adding, and, and keeping track of everything that has been announced in the literature, all the bulletins, uh, websites, and things, and whatever. Um, this is the other contest. We tracked ourselves, uh, apart from the operations that we've tracked, uh, having been in IOTA contest, within the 50% of the most, on the most wanted list, we tracked 135, which have been um, on, 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 uh, on, on, on with very little demand. So they do not request validation at this point in time. Maybe next year we decide to, to do validation for only 40 per the first 40%. Um, <coughs> uh, these are cancelled operations or postponed. We track them very, very accurately. Uh, we talk to the um, to make sure with the um, uh, you know expeditioners that indeed what was the reason if it's coming back or not to keep it or not on the on the log. And uh, so the total, the grand total in uh, nine months is 500 operations. So approximately two operations a day, not that much of a problem. Of course, there might be many more operations we have no idea of, and that would be operations outside of the order contest done to uh, island groups higher than 50%, which are in, uh, let's say, relatively little demand. We don't attract those at all. Um, next. Next is, I think, uh, rather, uh, really? Hmm. I thought that, um, uh, how do you go forward, this one? Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's go back. Sorry. Okay. So, um, <coughs> as you as you as you've been told, uh, we also I'm, I wanted to give a presentation on this um, a little bit of statistics on the Friends of Iota. So this is an initiative uh, approximately four months ago. I'd say that n right now we are in the four months, given or taken a couple of days. So <coughs> we have at this point uh, we have been. Um, blessed to, uh, uh, you know, at least 160 people to have trusted uh, what we presented and, and um, the aim of what, we, what we're trying to achieve and uh, the, the, the change of administration and everything else, uh, the effort of, of um, putting together a new software for the management of the program due to a number of reasons, uh, incorporating everything else and so on and so forth. 160 people from 36 DXCC totaling 16,000 £16, pounds. Now, on top of this, we, um, the trustees of, um, um, uh, of um, uh, Whiskey 4, Bravo Alpha Alpha for the uh, old-timer IOTA um, chasers, um, there was a there was, uh, very, very active um, um, IOTA chaser and 
with prominent roles in um, in the management uh, at, at, at some point. Um, so his bequest it's of approximately 2,600 uh, pounds. So uh, we are relatively close to the 20,000 pounds. Now that it, those funds are restricted by the trustees to some um, activities. So <coughs> they are. Um, treated as, as the Global Fund of Friends of IOTA, but for the IT um, program, uh, this is where we sit. And um, um, I think that this is approximately 63 or 64% of the target that we currently have. You see the continental uh, split. It's probably quite normal. Uh, about 53% of the funds have been received from Europe. Um, and about 32% uh, from North America, and of course you see the rest. Um, <clears throat> about 74% of all funds have been received from the honor rolls, which are honor rolls, the, 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 the chasers on the honor roll, which are those who have totaled, as of the current honor roll list, more than 561 IRS, which is a little bit um, interesting. So they, this contribution represents the huge um, attachment that these, uh, these people had to the IOTA program. But I'm not really sure how much they're going to be those tremendous users of the club log uh, QSO matching, because they are, you know, they're on the honor roll. They'll, they'll be in the very, very high areas where, yeah, sure, there'll be a few QSOs here and there, a few, few credits here and there. Uh, in any case, uh, the, one of the very interesting aspects of this is that 46 individuals, which is more than 25% of all individuals, although only totaling about 17% of the funds, uh, have come for people who just registered. They have zero credits, uh, most of them, or just tiny little of credits uh, for now, uh, or no credits whatsoever. So I think this is a very good um, indica in indicator that uh, the program is catching and that um, with the increase of the of the um, of the credits, more and more guys, and and the reliability of the system and the popularity of the system, uh, more and more uh, people will join forces, and hopefully we'll have more donations, and we'll be able to accomplish the t the first target we 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 need to accomplish in order to fund the project, uh, the the software development and IT project, but also hopefully allow us to launch. Um, to continue uh, launching, uh, you know, fundraisers, hopefully for other targets that other targets that uh, the um, I guess the board of directors will establish. Uh, these are the um, uh, the levels, and uh, you know, it's it, I think it's pretty good. What I would like to touch upon very quickly is that uh, everybody says about the G that's only so much percentage and this and that, but they are the third more generous sponsors, and I didn't even put the values here; it's just in numbers. Um, actually, the, the, the contributions from, from the G-Land have been uh, uh, I I very, very uh, uh, gracious, and uh, we, we thank them very, very much. Um, so let's move on. I think I have uh, very quickly just a list of um, the donors, um, and let's keep going. Uh, well, just for the G-Guys who might be on the list, you know, the list of the... <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank, thank, uh, we thank everyone very, very much. Um, no, but there was another slide which I had. I can't believe... Uh, no, oh here, you jumped me on this. This was the one that I wanted to show. This was the very, very probably the most important one. I was surprised it wasn't there. I thought it was at the end. Sorry about this. Um, uh, regarding the process of adding operation for QSOM matching, which is if you want part of a second validation um, project, um, apart from the ongoing uh, operations, which I described earlier, done by the validation team. Briefly, um, the unusual name, these are the, the phases which we'll go through one by one by one. We are at the very beginning right now. So the, uh, the usually named logs at CAB log have been matched against IOTA database call signs. So we have approximately 62,000 activities or yeah activities um, call signs that have been used per activities um, that has have been has be, have been tracked based on the paper credits uh, given by uh, Roger and um, you know the previous management uh, over 50 some years um, and based on those we can identify a number of logs at club log again which are matched against the call signs that would have to be usually named logs 
if it's K9AG slash VY0, we can identify that if it's slash VY0 underscore whatever. Currently, we can't. That, that is later in the, in the project. Then we determine if the retained logs match actual IOTA operations. That is done at this point in time. It's a very, it's a very tedious job. It has to be done looking at all sorts of resources we have access to. Um, DX Summit, um, checking very carefully the dates and things in the credits that have been uh, given, um, uh, websites, um, um, everything. If that can be done reliably, and the time can be established reliably, then that is passed on, and you've seen them already added. Uh, there are about the 1,600 operations that uh, Johan mentioned. So the operations are added. If that cannot be established reliably, then they are deemed for a next basket when we'll have to interrogate the operators for input to conclude on the remaining logs. We already know, for example, that an operation such as, and I understand that some uh, people may dis regard this as not being very interesting for them, but for, for the purpose of demonstrating how the system works and how the validation process works in this case, it is very interesting. GR2HQ, they have a type of operation every now in a, I think once a year, every now in a blue moon, um, where they work simultaneously, have four stations from four islands, from actually four IOTAs at the same time. There's no possible way that we can separate those logs, that log, that, and, and all are added as one log at club log, uh, GR2HQ. So we already deem that, so that we know that we will never touch it. We cannot, if somebody decides later on, for a similar operation, I'm talking about GR2HQ, so be some other operation, where two guys decide to operate from some very rare IOTAs, um, just because they celebrate something between this period of time, they use the same call sign. The only way to distinguish which is from where is the QSL managers based on who knows what information he has, but the club log lists them all together, but there's no way we can separate them. So we, they have to go and, and separate them in a different way. But if we get to the point where we can, can investigate the, um, the, um, the operators, uh, at which time we would also um, ask them and inquire whether they can add other logs we, we didn't find or we don't know that exist. Um, those operations will be eventually identified. That's the next phase. And we will add them, and I hope that this will go relatively smooth. I don't think that in two months we will do everything, but um, <coughs> we, we, th this is to be done. The other issue is to uh, identify the unusual named logs at club log based on uh, the relationship that has developed with Michael and, and his support, and then do the same thing. Those operations will have to be checked, and we'll have to add them as they come. Finally, we'll invite, as I said, the operators to upload their logs of all the operations at Club Log. There are a lot of operators who haven't done that for a number of reasons. Um, I'm not talking necessarily about the operations that took place 40, 50 years ago, and the guys don't want to do it. There are people who have them in electronic format, but then they uploaded them only to the log of the world for one reason or another. So <clears throat> um, I think we have to persuade them, and I hope that we're going to be able to build on this a little bit pressure from the community, a little bit from this, a little bit from that, and we'll get even more. I think that it I, I wouldn't be surprised if the total number of uh, operations that will act will, will have, I don't know if in two months, but let's say by May next year, will be in the range of 10,000, maybe 12,000, maybe, maybe 15,000. You know, so that is a considerable thing. Um, the, uh, the final uh, thing, uh, the final issue that we're going to have to deal with um, and again, some of you may consider this of some relevance or not, but we think it's important, is to clean the existing database by cross-checking credits to identify possible errors and generally reduce the noise level in the database. Why is this important? Maybe from a grandiose scheme and in the big, big picture, it's not important. But we believe that once the new system takes uh, place, and once we start, and more and more people are going to be um, uh, aiming to uh, use the club log credits, uh, even if they, 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 they will uh, request QSL cards and they will treasure them, which I believe that many will continue to do, um, they will submit their claims this way. That will have to reduce tremendously any possible writing errors, 
um, checking different boxes uh, when submitting applications, and with all the phenomenal work that uh, checkpoints have done, and particularly Roger as the administrator of the program, human error is something that it cannot be disregarded. It's, it's, it's there. So that will be seriously minimized through a large percentage that now will go through the direct uh, electronic um, uh, checking. So therefore, we will be faced, maybe not immediately, but over time, with a portion of the database which will have a very, very, well, much, re much smaller noise level. So we have to go back and do this cross-checking and see if we can catch any uh, little bad things that will, will have to be, um, you know, uh, hopefully, uh, well, we'll, we'll, we'll have to eliminate. Um, <coughs> I'm saying this because we've already done a couple of tests and we have, came come, uh, we have come across a few things and, you know, uh, uh, th those have been corrected and th there's, there's scope to go there. Um, uh, the um, last, we have to go to conclusions, I guess. Uh, yeah, I'll just go to the, okay. Yeah, so the, the Friends of IATA would have been afterwards, but. Um, <coughs> um, so in conclusion, um, and we discussed it, I'm going to mention this, uh, IOTA Limited is the administrator of the IOTA program. Friends of IOTA has been established to raise financial support for the time, uh, for, the, for the moment, for, for, for this, at this time, for the IE software development, but hopefully new initiatives, and we will be um, expecting from the, from, the, from the community ideas and aims of uh, what projects they want uh, IOTA to, to deal with, and you know, we'll see how that fits into the scope, and um, um, then request fund if necessary, and make other appeals. Uh, the development of the new software platform was required, apart from the technical um, reasons being somewhat uh, outdated and so on and so forth, and apart of some deficiencies which required phenomenal amount of work by Roger over the years to uh, compensate for, well, the inability of tracking what normally um, an efficient management system should track, apart from that, has, in, uh, has been developed to include this paperless care selling, and while doing this, uh, develop a much um, more um, 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 consistent interaction with um, all the other uh, sources, potentially going up to the club log and uh, to the log of the world, and so on and so forth. Um, a new website will be developed over the next little while, and uh, don't, don't, don't go right now because there's not going to be anything there. But uh, on behalf of um, um, our, our management team, I'm very pleased to announce that it will be iodaworld.org. So we retain this, and uh, uh, yeah, I know that now this is going to excite the guys, but <laughs> I don't think we're going to have anything ex in the very, very near future. But uh, we had to retain it, we decided to retain it, and you know, hopefully we'll uh, see some action there before not too long. Uh, the new system is scheduled to be fully functional, I said, as of uh, June 1st, 2015. Now, that includes, uh, 70, sorry, I apologize. That includes not just the platform that um, uh, um, uh, um, Johan has indicated um, uh, by May, hopefully earlier, but we don't want to propose something and then to you know, postpone it for three months and get people disillusioned. Uh, well, hopefully, that also includes the finish, the end of the major run of this edition of, uh, of Club Log um, um, uh, uh, options, uh, uh, um, operations, um, of all the additions for operations that for which uh, logs exist at Club Log. So um, as of, let's say, early June 2017, I hope that we'll be talking about a new phase in the program, which will be that of maintenance and, up and um, constant uh, revisions and, and so on and so forth. But that will be the system. So uh, the support will remain always essential. Uh, I was asked to <laughs> please donate if you can. Um, and, and if not, uh, look forward to uh, some whenever you will be able to do that. Um, what is essential is that, um, <coughs> um, well, any subsequent donations in any amounts will be constantly tracked, and you can move up in your sponsoring level, sponsorship level, um, as, as you go. It doesn't have to be, it's not, you know, now you have to donate, I don't know what large amounts you can donate, you know, 
I don't know, five pounds now, five pounds tomorrow, uh, five pounds uh, two years from now, and they will all be they will be tracked. Um, Roger. Okay, fine. Thank you, Caesar. Uh, you've heard this afternoon um, the success which we've so far made this year and the intention for the future. And I, I have to say, you may want to know what those developments might be in the future. The thoughts crossed our mind that we should perhaps have uh, an iota year of activity or sprints or something of that sort. There's plenty of potential to do this kind of thing and a lot of opportunity. We believe they would be uh, welcomed. It's possible that after the IOTA contest, one could have a week's activity by those IOTA stations staying on. And personally, I would like to see them operating on six meters to get, uh, to get more activity from IOTA on six meters. But anyway, it is, so, as I say, a, a, a successful year that we've had, but we do need support from you, not only financially, but also in human resource, resource terms. If any of you have got spare time and a real commitment, it has to be a real commitment to IOTA to help us uh, and to be able to respond pretty quickly to requests that we have in particular areas of the program, please let us know because we need, need more people doing this. This is a program on the up and uh, we believe that uh, uh, it should be supported in this way. In closing, I feel standing here like at a party conference. Uh, we've uh, seen what happened last year and in that light, but within, without the kitten heels and the, uh, the, the, the necklace uh, uh, and without saying uh, this is IOTA exit, because it is not, um, this, this is IOTA uh, in the future uh, in support and in partnership with the, uh, with the um, RSGB remain working with them and we aim to continue the program for all. So as uh, Theresa May said, black or white, gay or, or straight, uh, Brit or non-Brit, I'm not actually sure she said that, we are, a, we are a, a, a program for all of you. And so, conference, can I s s say how Pleased we are to see you, that you've listened to us, and we hope that you will support us financially because we still need your support. Thank you very much. <laughs>